What's up, folks? I'm odd, by the way. So today we're going to be doing something that I have technically done before, but not necessarily in this variety. So I've done a lot of videos where I've redrawn old art. Oftentimes it's from like my teens, like maybe 13, 14, uh, maybe 15, like, like early high school. Uh, there was a lot of like early teen tween stuff that I feel like I, I <laughs> definitely threw out and I'm a little bit upset about that, but it is what it is. But the main thing is, I never really was able to keep a hold of my childhood art, like my actual like little kid art. Because like, I was that type of kid that would just draw on any available surface and it didn't matter to me necessarily whether or not that was preserved. I just kind of got the idea out and then tossed it aside, did something else. And I never kept track of it. My parents rightfully never kept track of it. My hair is going everywhere and overall it, it just seemed kind of like that thing that was just bound to get lost to time right however i have found one source hidden in the basement and it was a booklet that i created in second grade and not only does it have uh some pictures into in it which we will get to it is quite possibly one of the most hilarious things that i own <laughs> And maybe that's part of the reason that my teacher insisted we create these, because honestly, like, less so our parents, I mean, obviously it's cute to look back at your kids' stuff and their thoughts, but like, as an adult looking back at my little kid stuff, it's so funny. <laughs> Especially, like, how bad that I was at writing, and like, I'm not gonna diss myself, I was seven, but, like, <laughs> it's just, I just, it's, it's great. Uh, so we start with our first, our cover, obviously, um, school's erased out not to dox myself or anything like that. Um, and yes, my full first name is Audra. Odd is short for it, that's where the nickname comes from. Head explosions, brains everywhere. It's my name. I, it's in places on the internet, you could probably look it up if you wanted to. It's never been a big deal. <laughs> but this is my second grade book from 2006 to 2007, so between the ages of 7 and 8 for me. I'm a 99 baby, so I age up with the year, but an eight, a year ahead. That's how, I, that's how I remember how old I was, because I'm not good at remembering numbers. And um, it is, in fact, very early 2000s, like, terrible lamination, word art, in rainbow form because that was the cool one okay no outline which was you know the, the big 3d ones that was the that was the real shit right but but i got the shadow i got the rainbow words like oh my god i i don't think that i did this i don't think i had the the technological capability to do this as a second grader i know a lot of people probably do now i think that my teacher made this <laughs> and like maybe we picked out the I want to say that I remember picking out this word art, but I could be very wrong. I don't remember. Regardless, it is fantastic. <laughs> and there's a random PowerPoint mouse on there for some reason. <laughs> and I just wanted to go through a little bit of this, and it's like two pages, and I won't even read them out all the way. I just think that it's hilarious, especially because there's a couple of pictures of baby me. You can see my widow face. My little <laughs> Jack Torrance face. <laughs> that is such an evil smile. <laughs> I remember showing this to my teacher and she was like, That's great. That's that is wonderful. That's oh, I could tell she was lying even then. I just I think I thought I was funny. And yes, it is titled Picasso. Picture. <laughs> I think that it wasn't intentionally a B. I think that I tried to write a lowercase p and then I didn't erase when I changed it to uppercase. This is a picture of me when in my class got to do a Picasso picture. It was really fun to learn about artists. We didn't just learn about him. We learned. Note how I spelled learn correctly <laughs> here and not here. <laughs> We learned about O'Keefe and other famous artists. Some were funny and some were original. I think that's supposed to be original. I think. I think. 
it's supposed to be I, I don't remember my mindset i don't remember half of this i i think i think i could just like it was interesting that we that we learned about georgia o'keefe because um right I, she, she has different art but her most famous stuff is the the vagina flowers <laughs> let's be real here and then we have another beautiful audi expression here the gym face <laughs> I think the thing was, at the time, my teeth, my front teeth were some of the first to go, and they were way bigger than the rest of my baby teeth. My baby teeth were tiny, and it made my front teeth look proportionately way too big. And even as a kid, I was very, like, self-conscious about that. So there's a good couple of years of me taking school pictures where I do not smile with my teeth. It's just not a thing that happens. Apparently it's fairly common actually for kids to get insecure about their teeth, but that was just something that happened. I I don't think like I don't think I was in a good mood. I think that was also why I was having difficulty smiling. It was very hot. It's not like I had a bad day that day, but I remember it being very warm and I do not operate well in the heat. So, little Jim Face Odd got her origami book. She's like, I, uh, I didn't know what other kind of book to pick. And um, this is a strange place. Because we went to, we took a field trip to a non-school library. So, like, just down the road. <laughs> Said, I really enjoyed the huge sex toy of origami. It was cool. And there where, and there where, <laughs> one hooded books, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely somewhere around a hooded, Adi. Definitely not more than a hundred books, a hooded, sorry, books in that picture alone. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but that's basically all I, like, all, all I'm gonna share about the, the little me writing and these, these pictures, because the rest are just kind of standard, like, oh, I'm in second grade pictures. Um, these two expressions and the Picasso drawing, the Picasso piece are the death of me constantly. <laughs> There's a bunch more where like I spell stuff so horribly. Like I said, I'm not going to call out my seven year old self, but I'm not not because it's hilarious. <laughs> so as you can see, these are some of the pieces that I have found in the back of this book. I think that at some point during the year, we were filling the books out and I just started drawing. <laughs> um, so the first drawing that you come across in this book that I know is mine is this lovely uh, bat alicorn chained up but very angry about it. And I think that this was from a group of characters that continues on throughout this book. They were who I was drawing at that time. They were like a group of like originally captured or like human owned animals that then escaped and became their own little gang and then this is a, a donkey i think a mule with a bird on top of its head i can't tell you i wasn't good at drawing birds if that's the case because this is nothing we got some dapper ponies so we've got a, a boy and a girl i forget if these are characters or like somebody's parents it looks like maybe this is a horse and this is a this is a, a donkey or this is a donkey and this is a horse I, I could not tell you look at those hooves look at them hooves <laughs> a very gendered picture here <laughs> of um a very feminine and, and very masculine dog i don't know if there's much else i can say about this this is a masterpiece is i love the curly eyelashes for girls that's a that's a big a big factor, a big like detail that I loved doing. And the little heart cheeks. The little heart cheeks are adorable. The little boop on the, the that's so cute. If I like I might not get to all of these because there are like seven that I took pictures of, but I wanna do this one. We have a another case of the curly eyelashes and me attempting horse hooves. And then we have what I believe may be the same character, but I'm unsure. It could be a dog. Like, in fact, it may be a dog because I think the way that I distinguished between dogs and horses was that I gave horses hooves and dogs 
heat. Maybe these these are these are feet. Maybe I'm unsure. But it looks like the same character. And then we have this this is the group picture of that group that I talked about that are all like escaped. They have black face markings with like little like three whiskers here. I was very into Naruto at that time. There's a there's this page of likes and dislikes in the back of this book that I didn't take a picture of. Uh, and I said that my favorite TV show at that time was Naruto. Just to give you an idea there. And yeah, I was very into the like the bean body shapes. You can tell that I wasn't... Maybe this is running? Was this running? I cannot tell you. Also, this I think this is a dog. I'm pretty sure that I named this dog Bandit, and that's the only dog that I know the name of since, because he was a prominent character in that, like, in the story that I was writing at that time. But, like, the rest of these guys, I have no clue. This guy has a little, like, nose ring. He's cool. Got a dragon. I think this is a manticore? Maybe? It looks like it has, like, like, uh, spider legs in the back. That's kind of cool. I don't think that was my intention, but that's that's what I'm gonna interpret it as. <laughs> and this was on the very back of this booklet, so you can see I hadn't drawn very much in this, but this is what exists of the remnants of my seven-year-old self-art. And that is insane, because that is 23 minus 7. I can do this without getting a calculator. Hold on. 16 years old. This book is old enough to drive. <laughs> Speaking of driving, I the reason that I've been like a little bit like out of posting as consistently as I want to, not that it totally matters, I, I was trying to post within the week, and now it feels like I post like at the end or like almost technically a week later and I, I didn't want to get to that but like I've been doing driving classes I've been learning how to drive and learning a new skill and like studying for <laughs> studying for the written test uh, is apparently a big load on your brain who knew learning a new skill would be hard <laughs> so it's been taking up a lot of my time as well as a lot of my drives were accidentally scheduled really close together because I misread a freaking form or something and Regardless, that's why there's been a slight delay. It's the the course is five week long, five weeks long. It should be done sooner rather than later. But I want to learn how to drive, and I want to learn how to do it well. So, you know, it took me long enough. I'm 24 now, <laughs> like. But regardless, I am going to pick a few of these drawings. I think to to work out probably three as per my usual tradition. I'm sure, but I'm going to fully flesh them out and try and make them into pictures that would make little me very happy. How can you say no to this face? <laughs> All right. Voiceover time. So first I went for that pinnacle first drawing of this set, that cool bat winged alicorn. I may or may not have initially tried to draw this without a horse reference in the sketch and immediately regretted it. I did in fact have a horse face, I remember it dearly, but overall I really think it was overshadowed by my dog face. I'm still in my dog face, honestly, just not quite as intensely, not quite as um, thinking I'm a dog as, as I did when I was a kid. It's interesting to see and remember that I did at least try to draw other kinds of animals, if only mostly mythical creatures. I went for a kind of atmospheric vibe here, trying to get some sort of background in. It's not super detailed by any measure. Uh, but I think it looks quite nice. I utilized Clip Studio Paint's chain brush for quite possibly the first time since I've had the, the program. Uh, it did look a little weird in comparison to the rest of the lines though, so I wound up kind of inking over like 90% of it, just using it as like a reference. It's moments like this that remind you that these things are tools and not necessarily instant fixes. In this, I gave the whole thing a bit more of a hopeful and badass vibe by having the alicorn slowly pulling against these decrepit chains. How long has he been there? Why? I don't know. I will say, I know that little me had no recognition of the fact that she was drawing cloven hooves on horses, but it so works because I'm a sucker for drawing cloven hooved unicorns in particular. 
I love heraldic unicorns with their beards and goat hooves and looking like their own creatures. Honestly, given that I knew I was going to make more than one, I may have spent a little bit too much time on this, but I really like the finished result. I think that it turned out really cool. Next up, I went for kind of a change in style. All three of these are actually turned out very differently, really. Um, for this one, I decided to go with the two front-facing dog drawings. Now, of course, I have a new canon for this one in my adult age. It's cross-dressing. <laughs> I, I love the idea of like taking this very kind of stereotypical portraits, where it was probably practicing some sort of dichotomy with my characters, maybe making somebody's parents like, hell, it could have been my parents, given that little me gave the boy dog a beard, but I think there's a picture of me with my parents in that memory book, and he didn't yet. And I remember <laughs> at one point freaking out in my childhood when he first grew a mustache. He has a full beard now, so this is funny. But <laughs> probably not my parents, if that's the case. Regardless, in this new one, the mustachioed dog is next to his drag persona, who has more muted colors, curled red hair, and an extra bow, but also the same bow as his bow tie around her neck, just moved over. Since this was fairly simplified, I went for some bright colors and patterns, and you know I kept those dimpled, little dimpled heart cheeks. Just look at them. Look at them! <laughs> I don't know if these two are similar enough to be considered the same dog, uh, really, but makeup is a very powerful magic, so I'm just gonna say they do. No clue what their names are. I didn't rename any of these characters, really, and I didn't write their names down anywhere. I mean, you saw my handwriting then. These weren't really my regular cast of characters. I remember the vague concept of a few of them. The only character I do remember creating around this time, beside the like the the general concept of the the mythical creatures escaping the humans, uh, was this character that I called Charlie, I think, and uh, he was a shape shifting alien who actually eventually was the the kind of the base for my OC satellite. I had a big thing with Littlest Pet Shops too, which is where all those big round heads and eyes came from, so just to give you an idea about that. I really considered it just leaving it at two. Um, after spending quite a while on the first one, but part of me really wanted to draw the group picture on the back. I mean, I feel like I had to. I basically decided to compromise via yet another style change, this one more line focused. Which is so funny because I wound up spending as much if not more time with the hatching, but it was just another type of drawing that turned my brain into like that nice slow mode, so I just rolled with it. Time consuming? Yes. Fun? Absolutely. I'm unsure, but I I think the dog may have been named Bandit. I, I mentioned this when I first saw the drawing. Um, I remember him being a prominent member of a group of animals that had escaped somehow, and I went for sort of a different design here, leaning into the fact that this dog-like creature I, grew, I drew didn't really look like one. I think he was supposed to look unique in some regard. I know at one point that the characters from the story had escaped the lab, Rats of Nim style, but I think that was later on. I don't think that seven-year-old Adi had that, uh, that degree of story building going on quite yet. Maybe that's the case here, though, with this new one. All these mythical creatures being held to study and this modified dog breaking them out. Even though the manticore probably had, like, hooves or something in the original, I really liked that idea of having him have, like, a scorpion body because that's 100% what it looks like in the original drawing. I really tried to give some creative brain power to the dragon's wings as well here. I'm honestly kind of proud of them. I'm learning slowly. It's like hands, okay? I'm not immediately great, great at figuring out how they move. I was totally gesturing with my own arms while drawing because bat wings do kind of look a little bit like hands. Uh, uh, the manticore's feathered wings are eh, but they look okay. I went in for sort of a blocky hatch style of shading. 
and I went in later with some white highlights for a little bit more detail. I kept the kind of mustard yellow toned down a bit. It looks kind of like a toned paper drawing this way, I think, and I really like it. I did stop at three. Uh, I suppose uh, I have a few more that I could do in the future if you guys are interested, but these were honestly the ones that stood out the most to me, that seemed the most fun overall. Uh, I think I think that if I could show little me a few of these drawings, she would absolutely flip. And it's really great to look at my art with that perspective when I'm feeling a little down about it. Are there any more of the drawings from the beginning that you think I should take a crack at? Or maybe that weird Picasso-inspired collage? Like, that's just art. Like, just by itself. I don't know if you could touch that. Which of the remakes was your favorite? Let me know along with any art challenges ideas you think would be fun to see from me. Or if you like this one, give this video a like and subscribe to see more stuff. I'm rolling really optimistically toward my goal of 50, so I really appreciate it. Regardless, I will see y'all next time.